Peace and blessings. This is Grand Kush, as always. Um, want to get into a topic I'd like to speak about uh, highly. You know, it's uh, who we are scientifically. I like to say non-scientifically. Who we truly are without uh, European identifiers. Um, we stay trying to classify ourselves based on skin. And the stray hair races are the races that gave us these descriptions that we still trying to rock today, right? And some of us are rocking these identifiers and not really understanding who we are by way of the most high God, which is the sun, okay? Uh, this book I'm showing you right here is called The Ancient Sun God by an author by the name of Hilton Hotima. You know, he's high up there in the occult. <clears throat> I got on him like maybe the early 90s, mid 90s, and a Freemason put me up on the information. He was like, you should check out this information, right? So you know, in the 90s, there's a whole lot of information going around, you know, based on whatever a circle of knowledge you was in. You know, I'm a universal, so I'm in all circles. You feel what I'm saying? That's nine. So let's, I want you to peep this book. It's going to come from a ghost perspective. It's not a black author. So, you know, some of the information may be uh, privy to his race. You got you to gotta be able to see with a nine eye, though. Let's go in. And then I'm going to break into, you know, who we really are by way of the sun, right? And uh, the true identity of who we are. Let's go. Pay attention to the, this is the cover right here. Right. You see this little stray haired on there. Stray haired person. Okay. Electromagnetic biochemical rays. Now, before the monotheistic gods' names were given, there was a god's name in Africa that spread throughout Africa, right? That spread throughout Europe, spread throughout Asia, and then the names changed, and that's the sun god Ray. That's why in English, you still got sun rays, or Ray is the name of the sun god. You understand what I'm saying? Under the god sun, you got sun. And then it, it break down these colors right here, right? Within these rays, you got a breakdown of colors. Today, we would call this the rainbow or the electromagnetic spectrum. You see what I'm saying? On the left side, it's got sunrise. On the right side, it's got sunset. And you got the colors ultraviolet, purple, violet, blue, azure, turquoise. Then he's got midday when the sun is at the highest, right? So the sunrise is dealing with the colors on the left, right? Then you got midday, and then the sunset is dealing with the colors on the right, which is yellow, orange, red, scarlet, magenta, and infrared. <clears throat> He's even got a breakdown of your blood pressure. When your blood pressure is high, it's in the morning time. When your blood pressure is low, it's at nighttime, right? Normal blood pressure between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. This is the ancient sun god. So this is written in 1956. You got to understand, right? Nine science. Nine science started waxing in the 60s. Okay. So a lot of occult writers, right? Writers of three ether high consciousness were the ghosts or, you know, Darker skin, the lighter skin, straight hair, mankind, races. You dig what I'm saying? You can think of the uh, Afro-Asiatic people who speak the Afro-Asiatic languages. The Anglo-Saxon languages, right? The Germanic languages, the Greek languages, the Latin languages. Those people. Uh, 
the Hindi languages. You dig me? So here's the chapters, the ancient light, the great sun, secret of the stars, astrology changed to astronomy, virgin mother, majesty of God's kingdom, the sovereign son, Abram, Abram, the sun god, Christian sun god, lamb of God, perfection. And uh, depending on how this read, I haven't read this in a long time. I'm just going to give a little bit. We just want to see how, you know, the words and the vocabulary that he uses. You know what I'm saying? And then we're going to apply that because this is three ether right here. You dig what I'm saying? This is a three ether writing. Right. So let's read a little bit right here. This is chapter one, the ancient light. So we talk about the light. You're talking about the light and all monotheistic books or all religious books, the light got to be the same. Light is light, right? Always there is a light in the humblest hut in the Eastern hemisphere, a light that never fails either physically or symbolically. To that extent, the Roman Catholic Church has been unable to eradicate all traces of the ancient sun worship of the masters. Moreover, it adopted that sun sent that same symbol of solar worship to please its members and to increase their number. A light constantly burns over the altar of the church. A light constantly burns before the holy ark in the synagogue. There is a light illuminating the crescent of the mosque. There was a light upon the hearth in ancient days. With the ancient masters, fire worship evolved from sun worship, and it had symbolical meaning. It is the oldest of all forms of ancient religion. Fire was venerated as a symbol of the sun, that mighty luminary from which all things emanate and to which, said the masters, all things return. Okay, he goes into a breakdown of the pyramid. Okay. Christian authors have twisted everything about the Great Pyramid of Giza to make it appear as an altar of stone to the church god in the midst of Egypt. <clears throat> Fire is the ancient symbol of life. Okay, it is the symbol of the purity of the cosmic elements, right? Fire is the most ancient symbol of life. It is a symbol of the purity of the cosmic elements. And I'm going to show you the purity of the cosmic elements as descendants, as we as Ethiopians, non-Ethereum beings descending on this planet. You understand what I'm saying? And the Egyptian mysteries, okay? And the Egyptian mysteries, there was a symbolical purification by fire as stated in our work, the mysterious Sphinx. See, they try to tie themselves into Egypt. You got to understand the limited information that's given by these white authors. You got to understand the power of what they call in Egypt. Okay. The high consciousness beings of that time in that area right from Uganda, Sudan, all the way up to Egypt, put the world on game. They changed it into the occult. They changed it into religion, okay? He breaks down our, st our, st our, st our star sun. You get the breakdowns on it, all right? But I want to see if he goes into a little bit more in depth of uh, the purposes. All right, we'll start here and then we'll go into some nine science. Secret of the stars. Europe and America have little reliable history of the ancient world. This is Hilton Hotima. You can look it up. You can see he's a, he's a ghost man. That history was destroyed by the church in the fourth and fifth centuries when it burned the big libraries. Then the church fathers wrote their own history of the ancient world. And that is the history contained in encyclopedias. Much of it is false, incorrect, and misleading. That is the reason why we find no correct account of the ancient masters and their wonderful work and why there are three great symbols, the Zodiac, the Sphinx, and the Caduceus, which all goes back to black men. Okay. Sun men. 
original human, right? The original gods along with their goddesses on this planet receive such scanty and faulty mention. Dictionaries and encyclopedias purposely fail to tell us that the zodiac circle, those mysterious wheels of Ezekiel 115 and 16 with its 12 points reveals, explains, and proves the arrangement and composition of the universe and the place of everything in it. Okay. So I can go deeper into the zodiac, right? But nine science deals with all space, all matter, and all time. And the zodiac is a part of it. So he was giving you a little bit of the sun. What I wanted you to pay attention to, though, really, was the cover. Okay. Okay, the cover. Okay, this is where you get sun man and sun woman with afro hair. All right, let's go into nine signs. But let's give a little breakdown on you melanin again. All right, stay with me. Let's read. Let's see. Let's see, it's scientific. The genetics of human pigmentation, a complex puzzle dealing with the biochemistry of eumelanin and pheomelanin. Okay? Eumelanin and pheomelanin. All right. This is a write up by Nathaniel Holcomb. You know, you don't have to uh, stay with one author or one scientist who is talking about you melanin, but they all have to talk about the same base of you melanin and uh, the discovery and information of you melanin. You melanin versus feel melanin, right? Okay. Now we're dealing with the races. We're dealing with all the races. On the planet, there are two major pigment types present in the skin, okay? They are identifying us by our skin, which is causing separatism, all right? Separatism. Instead of teaching the races, the true order of the races, we fall into their games and we want to be identified using the terms and terminologies and concepts that they came to describe us to designate who we are. Right. And also separate ourselves from other brothers and sisters that look like us. You understand what I'm saying? See, nine science and the great master teacher, Dr. Malachi Z. York, told us that they, that the ancient gods placed us under a spell. See, to enslave somebody and make them do your work where you sit in the throne as a false ruler goes back in ancient times. You understand what I'm saying? But let's go in, you melanin and feel melanin. Okay, each is made exclusively in melanocytes, right? And blackness. And each derives from the amino acid tyrosine. Okay, now hold on. I told you, you need to understand where if you're going to use the 1828 definition to identify yourself by way of being copper colored, right? You got to understand where the copper color comes from, all right? Where the copper in the system of this oxidation of eumelanin, how copper plays into that. Let's look into that, all right? All right, I'm not going to go too much into it, but it is a scientific study. You understand what I'm saying? Like, Okay, so copper amine oxidase, a novel use for a tyrosine. Okay. Abstract. The first three-dimensional structure of copper amine oxidase demonstrates that one tyrosine residue is converted into two, four, or five. That word, quinine, TPQ. TPQ binds to copper in the inactive form of the enzyme, but not in the active form. Okay. This is all a part of eumelanin. Okay. You said tyrosine. So when you see tyrosine, Okay, this is this is the copper, okay, that you're dealing with in the 1828 definition. If you want to use that, you got to know how to back that up. You can't just say skin because it's a lot of copper. It's a lot of copper people on the planet, right? Okay, 1828 definition of American, okay? 
not Indian, but American. All right. Originally applied to the aboriginals or copper colored races. Races. Okay. Not the copper colored race found here by the Europeans. But now applied to the descendants of Europeans born in America. Okay. So I just showed you the copper color. Okay. Tyrosine. Boom. 1828 definition of Indian. Adjective from India and thus from Indus. Okay. The name of a river in Asia. Okay. This is the 1828 definition. So if you're using the American definition, you got to use the Indian definition as well. Okay, pertaining to either of the Indies, East or West, Indian. Now, a general name of any native of the Indies. Okay, of the Indies. America is not in the Indies. It is not. As an East Indian or West Indian, it is particularly applied to any native of the American continent. Okay. But a general name for a East Indian or a West Indian, right? 1828 definition of Negro. Check this out. Dictionary defines black as a Negro, a person whose skin is black. Okay. Anybody whose skin is, the, is black is a Negro. You understand what I'm saying? By way of the 1828 definition. Okay. Do we see Negro? Okay. Now, this is the 1828 Noah Webster's definition of black. It's firstly defined as pale to lighten. Who was the real Negroes then? Right? Because they black but they pale to expose to the sun or bleach. There were only two negative uses of the word in 1828, wicked and dismal, mournful. Some spooky happened back then for this to be applied to and have darker skin inhabitants of America. Okay, you see pale to lighten, right? Why are we using these terms? Okay, because uh, uh, if, if we using the 1828 definition of Indian and American to define ourselves, well, what about 1827? What about 1820 when the definition didn't exist? What was you? You see what I'm saying? I'm showing you what we are without no question. Let's go back to you melanin. Boom. Sun heat genes. When you say you melanin, you say sun heat genes. Okay. Which is tyrosine, which is oxidized and cyclized through the actions of tyrosinase and other pigment enzymes. Tyrosinase is the rate limiting enzyme for melanogenesis. Right. And plays a role in converting the amino acid tyrosine to dopa and then to dopaquinone. Eumelanin is a dark brown black bioaggregate of melanin pigments derived from, I'm not going to try to say that right there, DHI in short, which themselves derive from dopa and dopaquinone. Eumelanin is an inert pigment capable of effectively absorbing UV photons as they enter the epidermis, okay? They can't do that. That's the whole science right there, okay? You see what that said? Absorbing UV photons as they enter the epidermis. What do we do with the UV photons, okay? What do we do with the UE photons? If this, if this is the life right here, 
we must be we must become what we absorb. And there's a reason why we don't see ourselves as such. This is a part of the spell. This is a part of the trick knowledge. Right? This is how they dumb us down. We're looking for uh, 1828 definitions to define who we are when we pre-exist pre before any encyclopedia, def, uh, dictionary, uh, religious book. You dig what I'm saying? Okay? This is all written into the science and the religious books, though. Fair skin, okay, heavy de de uh, deposition of eumelanin in the epidermis explains in large part why dark-skinned individuals are relatively protected from acute and chronic UV pathologies. It didn't say, it didn't say Africans, right, Indians, okay, but we taking it a bit deeper. We saying with the Afro hair, though. Okay, for it to really work, for you to really use the sun, sun, solar force. You know what I'm saying? Is Afro hair. Feel melanin is also derived from tyrosine, but there is an incorporation of a cysteine during its biosynthesis. Okay, that's not that's 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 not supposed to go down. See the original people up here with the with the heavy dark skin, right? With the afro hair, and then you got the cysteine people. Retention of the solar atom donated by cysteine is thought to be responsible for pheomelanin's reddish orange color and its pro-oxidative chemical nature. Pheomelanin is much less able to block UV energy. In fact, may synergize with UV photons to promote free radical formation and carcinogenesis in the skin. Okay. You got it. You got to know about this right here through skin complexion is more. Those skin complexion is multigenic. It is well established that the MC1R and CAMP signaling lead to greater eumelanin production with elevated eumelanin to pheomelanin ratio. Right. They don't that this, this MC1R you know, it's fucked up in the biosynthesis of pheomelanin. So they come out with uh, straight hair down to down to the ghost. You dig what I'm saying? That's the science right there. And they go to break down. And so when you look at this code right here, you got to know what you're looking at when it comes down to pheomelanin and eumelanin, right? And then you can clearly understand when you understand this breakdown here, you will see that they came after us. So how can we be following the minds and, 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 and the eye vision of the mankind races? Okay, let's go a little bit deeper here. What is Nuwapu? Okay, what is Nuwapu? Nuwapu is pronounced Nuwapu. The meaning of the word Nuwapu is the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Nuwapu is all knowledge, all wisdom, all understanding, finite and infinite. So y'all got to come with y'all science. You got to come with the science. What, what science, solar science, y'all might be using moon science. What solar science are you using to counterattack the adverse forces that these mankind races is giving, giving up? They taking more and more lands. They being able to uh, uh, build more and more houses on the lands that was taken from the original Americans. Or so what politically? What culture, heritage, and science are you using to counterattack the adverse forces? You know the demonology used to keep us in a in a, in, a, in a lowly state, a low frequency state. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and seeing how they see. Nuwapu is the science of sciences and the science in sciences. Nuwapu is the spiritual science that existed before the great flood of Noah 17,250,000 years ago. It's therefore the science of the original creative forces. Okay. The science of the original creative forces. What this is saying, 
right? Anything after that time came under Nuwapu. Okay. Nuwapu was the information that civilized the planet by, by written records. Okay. And the original spiritual science of the African pygmies and Ethiopians in general. Nuwapu was the science in which and with which the universe was grown. Okay, Nuwapu existed for a long time after the flood, but finally gave way to pantheism in accordance with time cycle laws of nature. Just as in accord with the time cycles of nature, pantheism eventually gave way to religion as we know it today. Now it's time for Nuwapu again. Okay. So let's go into here, right here. And I'm going to close it off with this, okay? And understanding by way of vocabulary and nine science, uh, in essence, a kind of a, a breakdown with this page, what Sun He Genes is, all right? All original gods and goddesses of flesh and blood were shiny, jet black in color and grew genuinely kinky hair on their heads by nature. For two main reasons, the sun who fertilized their mother's mother goddess's earth eggs by ethereal lightning ray or beam has kinky hair called foculi by mundane scientists and is shiny jack black itself. Okay. That's all black. Out of, out of blackness comes these colors. Okay. And two, when Mother Goddess Gia Earth was first orbited from the sun, billions of years ago, she was in flames, but finally cooled off and down enough for other life forms and activities. However, sun genes of nine ether in her atmosphere were so dense and potent, so strong that anyone who could survive in it had to have sun genes. Inside strong enough to offset or balance the sun genes outside. So the sun genes inside the gods and goddesses of flesh and blood were so strong and powerful from the fire. You see the breakdown when they was telling you about the fire, right? What the fire became a symbol of the sun and the electromagnetic energies. So strong and powerful from the fire called nine ether and the water contents therein that they call shiny black skin and also kinky hair naturally. Okay, so if you're looking at Indians, dark-skinned Indians with straight hair, they're not the original ones. And, and Negroes is using these pictures to say that they are them. So how you go from straight hair to Afro kinky hair? You dig what I'm saying? We got to keep it real. Don't self-hate yourself, man. You know what I'm saying? Understand who you are by way of the sun, God, and goddess. Call shiny black skin and also kinky hair naturally and still do in the direct descendants of these original gods and goddesses whose posterity is now called the Ethiopian race, also called the black race and the African race. Let it be remembered always and let it be known. Peace.